be back to Lord's house again. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry. Anyway, Sorry. Sorry. Please, John. That's what I tell you. What kind of music got to play? That static in it. Uh, you'll get to that in a while. Amen. All right. It's good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. Trust you much in prayer. Have some things that we're going to cover in the Sunday school lesson this morning. I believe that we're living in prophetic times. I know that there's a lot of uh, uh, people that uh, that disagree. They've had some tell me in life for a while. You know, I never thought uh, when I was younger, I never thought that I would live to see uh, the coming of the Lord. But my view has changed. Uh, now, I want to say, and uh, it's not just been one that's told me that, but uh, uh, for many years uh, I have been, uh, I guess you could say, an aided student of prophecy. And, uh, I've been uh, actually probably uh, 30, 40 years ago when I was teaching, you know, people would get this big question and, and everything about the teachings, but it comes directly from the Word of God. And I feel like according to the Word of God, and we've already in the site last several weeks uh, brought you through 5,000 given and exact years of, of the Word of God. The first 2,000 years, the second 2,000 years, which brought us up to the time of Christ, and we're dealing with the uh, book of Daniel, chapter number 9, verses 24 through 27, uh, and the uh, 70 weeks of Daniel is what we're dealing with, and how that they're prophetically aligned with the time that we're living in. We began to look at, uh, at this, and we brought you, as I said, through that, took you on past the 2,000 years that we're now living in, to into the period that we call the millennium. Uh, which is the 7,000th year according to my theological persuasion. Now, let me say this morning, I'm going to teach according to my scriptural and theological persuasion. If you disagree, we will fall out. It's human to disagree, but it's unchristian to give dodge with one another. Okay, so I'm just not going to do that. All right? Uh, but uh, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter number 24 this morning. I promised you last week that we would uh, just go into scriptures and if we just dealt, I guess you could say, kind of uh, uh, gave an overview last week and uh, people said, well, preacher, what is happening uh, in the time that we're living in? I believe that we are seeing the unfolding of what culminates into the last days. Uh, I believe that we are seeing the beginning of the end. And the Bible tells us in the book of Luke, which we will read to you here in a few minutes, when you see these things begin to come to pass, he said, no, that my coming is not, even at the door. Uh, now, you're seeing worldwide spread of chaos in every free nation in the world right now. Every free nation uh, in the world. Someone asked me last Sunday, he said, uh, Preacher, who do you think that Babylon is uh, in the book of, I said, in the book of the Revelation? And they said, yeah. I said, well, when you read chapter number 18, the first portion of chapter number 19, in the book of the Revelation, I said, there's only one nation that is in the world presently that can fit the description of Babylon in the book of the Revelation. Where you see the ones that are sitting out in the sea, the merchants who say Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Uh, become the cage of every foul spirit, uh, of every unclean bird, and hope of every foul spirit uh, has fallen, and they, they omit it uh, because it was the source of their wealth. Now that's uh, paraphrasing, but it was the source of their wealth that they omitted. Uh, many years ago, as I shared with you last Sunday, uh, there has been a plan ever since World War II to destroy uh, the United States of America. One socialist leader said this, don't attack America, wear it down gradually. And that's what's happening. And it said, another one said, don't attack America from without, attack it from within. Can I ask you a question this morning? Is there plan and their plot come into place? Yeah. All right. So, there, you know, it's coming into being. I'm not getting into history, okay? I'm not going to bore you. I said whenever I was going to school, in the years that I spent in school, I said history was boring to me, but now I wish I'd paid a whole lot more attention to it than I did. Uh, one man that is representing the family of a black man that died said this. He's against removing all the historical monuments. He said because whenever that we remove history, we're prone to repeat it. Amen. You know the reason that they are removing history from the view of 
especially the American public, they don't want your kids to know where we come from and why we're here. That's right. If they can eliminate where we came from and why we're here, then they can make their own government in which it's the same thing that happened in Judges that every man did what was right in their own eyes. That's where we're at today, church. Amen. There's no standard. There's no point of reference in our society today. And without a point of reference, you turn into what they're trying to produce in our world, and that's a lawless society. I promise you this, and I'm getting into the Word of God just being still laying the foundation because the Bible said that the coming of the Lord it would be perilous times. Right? Amen. Amen. There will be distress of nations with perplexity. <clears throat> you said, what's that? It means problematic conditions with no answer. Okay? That's what we're at. We are living in a nation that's distressed with perplexity today. Amen. And there's no answer. Okay. I'm not prejudiced. I've got some tremendous black friends. But if a black person, everybody in here is white this morning, Caucasian, and I don't say that, you know, or of a black origin, some French, some German, some Russian, some don't tell them what. But how easy is it and how quickly are you going to get a response from law enforcement officers if you call someone or call someone off color is breaking into your home? They're afraid. I don't blame them. Do your job and get sent to prison for them. Now, I'm not, I'm not backing what the guy did. The black guy. I'm not doing that at all. But you see, we're in a time of fear. Okay? We're in a time of fear. They call the military out and get rubber bullets. Okay. So can we agree? I'm going somewhere, don't I? Just give me a minute. Can we agree that there's never been a time like this? There's never been a time like this. Matthew chapter number 24. If you have your Bible this morning, turn with us. Chapter number 24, verse number 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, I want you to notice the punctuation in this particular scripture right here. And as I've shared with you before, there's three questions that's asked here in this. He said, what shall be the sign? He said, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, whenever that you read in your Bible, when you read and you see the punctuation before a conjunction, most of the time, it's talking about like or adjoining events at two separate times. Okay, so we ask him that. What's going to be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Now, we shared last Sunday with you. Our faith, I'm a pre-millennial believer, make no apologies for it. I believe Jesus is coming to get the church out before that, what we call the tribulation period, the period of indignation takes place. And that's what I want to settle in your heart this morning. You see, if we can get this settled in our heart, we can have peace in the time of tumult. If you're ready to meet God. If you're ready to meet God, okay? So we ask him, so what's going to be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? In other words, the disciples through the teachings of Jesus realized that his coming and the end of the world was going to be two different things. Okay? Amen. Now, whenever you read the end or the end time, the definition for that in the Greek means a period of time that culminates to a finality. In other words, it's uh, the end time is like uh, days, weeks, months, years that brings us to a finality. The Bible says here in chapter number 24 and verse number 21, look at what he says here. He said, And then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. All right, we're facing that all over the world. Look at the Bible in chapter number 24, verse number 33. And the Bible says, So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Know that when you see all these things, know that it's near, even at the doors. So can I say we're seeing these things today? So we have got to acknowledge from the teachings of Jesus, if you have a red letter Bible, that's in red in your Bible. 
And so that's the teachings of Jesus. And he said, no, it's near. When you see these things happen, no, it's near. And I'm not going to analyze chapter number 24 of Matthew today. We might sometime a little later. But chapter number 21 of the book of Luke, in verse number 28, look at what he says. And the Bible said, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. When these things begin to come to pass, then lift up your heads and look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Back to Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 37. The Bible says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For the days <coughs> that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until uh, that the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Look at that. One shall be taken, the other left. Now I want you to notice something right here that I found very profound. What he's saying in the first couple of verses there that are read, he said, well, it's going to be going along as normal. And then all of a sudden, Amen. So all of these people, I've had people ever since I've been in the ministry, 50 years this year. I've had people ever since I've been in the ministry that's looked at me and said, well, whenever things get so bad, I'm going to get things straightened out. Well, the first thing about it is a head-on collision don't make everything get bad. But number two, suppose you do live until everything gets bad. You already missed the boat. If you're waiting till these things start unfolding and you're so blind in your eyes right now that you can't see that end time prophecies are coming to pass right in our very day, hey, you're blind. You're blind. People say, well, why can people believe what they're believing about uh, a lot of society, defunding the police and everything going on? I said, well, the Bible says that whenever they've gone so far that they won't believe God, paraphrasing once again, that He'll send them strong delusions that they might believe a lie, that they might be down, who have not believed the law of the truth. You see, we're living in Bible age. We're living in, uh, hey, as I told you last Sunday, let me paint you a real dark picture, but give me just a few minutes, all right? And I'll bring you to the positive side of this thing if you're saved. If you're not saved, you know what? You're without hope. The Bible says all of us were without hope and without God in the world. But aren't you glad you found hope yeah. if you saved us? Yeah. Praise God. Makes me feel like good about three trips around the world. Amen. Amen. Saying hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm saved this morning. I've got hope. But look at what it says right here. I'm going to give you hope before I get into the darker side of it because, uh, well, I won't get ahead of myself this morning. Uh, but the Bible tells us here, as, as I read to you, as it was in the days of Noah, that we were drinking, marrying, giving in marriage before Noah entered into the ark, ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken the other way. Which one will you do? Two women shall be grinding in the mill, and one shall be taken the other way. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered the house to be broken up. Amen? Amen. So you don't know when he's coming, so just be there. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you. Just be ready. Make sure that you've been to Calvary, got your sins under the blood, and you're living in accordance to the truth of the standards of God's Word. Because you see, they're, they're, the proof of a pudding is in the tasting. Amen. So in other words, if you've got a changed life because of a trip that you made to an old face and all in repentance, it's a good sign you're saved. Uh, but if you just made a, ch a trip to an altar and it didn't change it. It wasn't repentance, it's remorse because you got caught in something you was doing. There's a difference between remorse and repentance. Repentance will make a new person out of it. Paul said in the book of Corinthians, whenever he was writing to the church of Corinth, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He might like me, but he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, but old things have become new. Aren't you glad that that part of that hits you right now? Oh, you still have a fight with the flesh, but I'm glad there's a new man living on the inside of this old flesh. Amen. You see, I'm going to get rid of this old flesh one day after a while. It's going to be laid down. Amen. But that new man's going to continue to live. Praise God. Let me go on. The 
Bible tells us in the book of Luke, chapter number 21, and verse number 36. I told you he's going to share a lot of scripture with you today. You say, why all the scripture, preaching? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. I can stand here and tell you things all day, and it will not generate or activate faith in you. But if I give you the word of God, then it's going to generate and activate faith on the inside of it. Because I might be wrong, but this is Amen. The Bible tells us in chapter number 21 of the book of Luke. You say, Prince, what are you trying to say? Jesus is coming. You better be ready. You'll hear me say that more today. Jesus is coming. You better be ready. Amen. Luke chapter number 21, verse number 36. Here comes the hope. The Bible says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and stand before the Son of Man. Now, I want you to notice the emphasis on this, where we're going to be. How many of you know the judgment seat of Christ is made for Christians? Is that right? Amen. It's what Paul said in the book of Romans, also in the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. We'll all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. What did it say right here? Watch ye therefore and pray always that you might be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Now listen. Read that one more. That shall come to pass. We're going to escape, then it's going to come to pass. You know what I said, brother? Amen. I like your spirit. Amen. 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 Is that the context of the scripture? That we might be worthy to escape all these things that shall. How many of you know shall come hasn't happened yet? Lunch shall come after life. It's not here yet. Uh, Amen. Amen. These things that are coming, listen, we're seeing the beginning of it. We're seeing the beginning of sorrows. And the Word of God told us plainly that the church will see the beginning of sorrows. But it is not going to... Glory to God. It is not going to see the culmination of sorrows. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go on, can we? Amen. Pray that you may be worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man, the judgment seat of Christ. Now we know the judgment seat of Christ is going to take place at the rapture, catching the way of the church. I've had people tell me, preach, rapture is not in the Bible. I said rapture is just the definition for catching the way, or catching the way is just the definition. Uh, the Bible tells us this shall be called up. That is actually the definition of rapture whenever you go into the Aramaic or the Greek. Amen. Where it be uh, the pier or harpazo, that's just the definition for it. Called up, okay? Amen. And so we're just translated into English whenever the translator is translated uh, in King James time. It was just translated into one word so we'll know what he's talking about. All right? Amen. Okay. Amen. I hope you got that. Bible tells us in the book of Zephaniah. Go into there if you would, please. The book of Zephaniah. I want to share with you something uh, this morning if God will help me. The Bible tells us in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established, correct? Yes, it does. Zephaniah chapter number three in the Bible, or chapter number two in verse number three. Seek ye the Lord, all ye men of the earth, which have brought his judgment, seek his righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall, at least it is, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. When tribulation and judgment comes upon this world seeking, what did Luke say? Pray that you may be. Uh, what did Zephaniah say? Seeking. Amen. So you're going to find that the prophets talked about a people that was going to escape this tribulation that's coming on the world. You'll find that the gospels talked about, because I just read it to you in the book of Luke, about a people that's going to escape this tribulation that's coming on the world. You'll find the evangelical epistles in your Bible talks to you about a people that's going to escape this tribulation that's coming on the world. Best I can count in my mental education, that's three. And he said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. So he told us in the prophets, there's going to be a people that's going to escape the wrath of God, the judgment of God that's coming on the world. He told us in the gospel, in the word of gospels, in the words of Jesus Christ himself, there's going to be a people that's going to escape. He told us in the evangelical epistles, 
more places than one that there's going to be a people that's going to escape. I'm giving you hope today. Amen. Pray. Hey, I don't see I can get much worse before Jesus comes, but I can see that's going to get a whole lot worse after he does. Amen. You think it's bad now? If you ain't ready, you just hang around. It's going to get bad. I got her hang up a lot of time. Amen. Go to Isaiah chapter number 26. Isaiah chapter number 26. <clears throat> the Bible tells us in verse number 19. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. That sounds like a, rec uh, a resurrection. Hmm. Awake. And sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Yeah. The earth will cast out the dead. Yeah. Yeah. The word for appear, whenever that you look at it in the Greek, or harapeso in Aramaic or vice versa, whichever one it is. It means to snatch away forcefully. Did I read that right? Shall cast out the dead. Now listen, I want you to look at this. Come, my people. He's only talking to a specific group. Come, my people. Enter thou into thy chamber and shut thy door about thee until the indignation be overpassed. He said, come on up here and hide yourself in the chamber. Did he not say, Jesus said, John chapter number 14, verse number 1, I go to, be sick. I go to prepare a place for you. If I don't prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Now, if he went to prepare a place for you, Brother Randy, that means that's your place. Look at this. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers. You got it, Brother Jim. You got education to come out for us over with. I've gone for a prepare a place for you. Come and enter into thy chambers. Amen. I'm about to get full. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And shut thy door about thee and hide thyself as it were but for a little moment. You know what that means? That means for a short space of time. Amen. What is that short space of time? So we're 23 and a half and seven years. And I don't know how quick God's going to cut it short, but He is. But there's still a one week of Daniel left that we're going to share with you. There's still a one week of Daniel left, which is the 70th week. We're living in the gap right now, which he came to redeem the church. He came to extend grace to us for the will. Amen. And at the end of that, I want to tell you something. He's going back to Israel for a period of seven years. And sometime during that period of seven years, he's going to cut it short in righteousness. Amen. I don't know when, because he said if he hadn't cut it short, there'd be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, he had shortened those times. Go to what Matthew chapter number 24 says. Amen. Amen. So look at the word of God. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 57. Verse number one. It's just Bible. Amen. It's just Bible. And I like it. The righteous perisheth and no man layeth it to heart. The merciful men are taken away, and none considered that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Amen. Did I read that right? Amen. Now I don't know if you've got NIV or a parallel living Bible or anything like that. I don't know what you're saying, but mine says that the righteous are going to be taken away, Brother Robert, from the evil to come. Amen. I said from the evil to come. So that means, according to that, now, Jesus said, it shall come. Isaiah's already said in Isaiah 26 that there's something going to take place afterward. Now here it says to come. So that means right before 
I didn't have this in there, but let me read it to you. I didn't have it in the notes. People said, Richard, why do you have notes? Well, you come up here and remember all this. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel chapter number 12, verse number 1. And at that time, at what time? When all this stuff comes up, this, these evil rulers begin to rise up to bring persecution upon Israel. At that time shall Michael stand up the prince, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. It didn't say during that time, it said at that time. At that time. Not during. So you say, what does it mean? Just one brother home we see this thing fixing to unfold. We'll get out of here. Amen. Gone. Kind of like we were over the years with that brother sitting on a plane with us. We took off from here to Asheville. Took off from Asheville, flew to Charlotte, Charlotte to Newark, New Jersey, and from Newark, New Jersey to Tel Aviv, Israel. We took off over here in Asheville. We got in, got set down, got buckled in. That thing's taken off. You feel the G force pushing back against the seat. He looks over at me and says, We're out of here. <laughs> and say we're out of here. <laughs> Amen. Look at Malachi chapter number 3 verse number 17. And the Bible says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. You better be good. Amen. I will spare them as a man. Spareth his own son that serveth him. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Now I've already given you the word of the gospel. I've given you three or four places in the word of the prophet. Now go to 1 Thessalonians in your Bible. Thessalonians chapter number 4. Verse number 4. Look at what the Lord God says. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Or verse number 14, excuse me. That's a good verse anyhow. It did apply. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, I believe that there's going to be a reuniting of soul and body. There's going to be a body of resurrection. We're going to be resurrected like in the end. Amen. How many of you know whenever Jesus is put in the tomb, there was a separation of body and soul? He went to the heart of the earth, preached to the spirits, and went to prison. But how many of you know at his resurrection, there was a reuniting of spirit or soul and body, and he came out of there? Amen. 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 Yes, he did. <coughs> But the Bible says here, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or go before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, praise God, like Job said. Him, Job saw this. Job said, The wife of the skin once devoured this flesh and in this flesh shall I say God. I know my Redeemer liveth, and in the latter days he will stand upon the earth. And I'll be holding for myself and not another. Though after the skin worms devour this flesh, yet in this flesh will I see God. That's what yeah. Job said. Yeah. Job supposedly the oldest book in your Bible. Amen. But well, way back yonder, right after Genesis, or during Genesis, there was a man by the name of Job who was looking forward to a time of redemption of the body. Looking forward to a time of resurrection. Looking forward to a time of seeing the Lord. Amen. 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 I got 60 minutes worth of teaching to do in six minutes to do. Pray for me. Come on, 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. That word trump right there in the Greek, in the Greek means a loud resounding, such as is made with a voice of shout. I believe it's what John heard in chapter number 4, verse number 1 of the book of Revelation when he said, Come up here!
For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to, to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. When he's talking about wrath, it's an understood subject regarding the day of the Lord, which he just mentioned above him. I'm not appointed unto the day of the Lord, but I'm appointed to obtain salvation. Which the word salvation, the definition of salvation is deliverance. I've been appointed to be delivered. I've not been appointed unto wrath. What appointed me to be delivered? The blood of Jesus Christ being applied on my sinful soul, washing and taking it white as snow, come let us be some together. Hey. That's what Isaiah said. Come let us be some together. But Jesus is coming. And if, if the Lord will help me sometime in the next few weeks, months, or years, if He don't come, listen, if He comes and I don't get to teach all this, just study that He said. Because I ain't going to be able to teach it. Amen. But the Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse number 1. <clears throat> now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. Now I want you to notice Jesus is coming and the brethren are gathering together unto Him. Is that what your Bible says? Okay. That ye be not so shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Now he's saying, whenever that we are gathered together unto Him, then the day of Christ is at hand. Is that, what, is that what you mean? Amen. Yeah. In other words, the day of Christ, the day that He comes to fulfill and execute the prophecy of judgment, it's not going to take place until we are gathered together unto Him. Praise God. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 15. First Corinthians chapter number 15. Give me about three more minutes. If you would. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 22 through 24. <laughs> it says this. Second, excuse me. Give me a minute. 15. That was important. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 22. And the Bible says this. For as in, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Look at what it says. Afterwards, they that are Christ's at his coming. Not everybody, but they that are Christ's at his coming. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. Only the only one is going to be resurrected at his coming are they that are his. Amen. They that are Christ's at his coming. Then I want you to notice what it says. Afterwards, then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered, is that what your Bible says? Then comes the end when he shall have delivered the kingdom to God, even the Father. I wish somebody shout or something. <laughs> Then comes the end when he shall have delivered the kingdom to his... In other words, he's going to deliver the kingdom once he's fought his people to his father. Then he'll come the end. Yeah. And the end, remember what it says? The end. A period of time culminating to the finality. You go get the definition, that's what it'll say. All right? Amen. So we see, okay, our gathering together to him to the events. In the order. Hey. Now the Bible says at that time. Now let me share with you. I'm going to share this and I'm going to close. I've got to. But we know that the next thing on the time frame, we're getting out of here as a church of the living God. As the blood of Jesus Christ, we're getting out of here. Amen. We know that the next thing to take place is the period of tribulation that we've read to you somewhat about this morning upon Israel. Now, the Bible tells us, and I'm going to throw this out and go home and study, and we'll teach a little more in depth maybe next Sunday about it. But the Bible tells us, God said in uh, Isaiah 24 and 5 that Israel broke a covenant, but 55 and 3 through 13, 
He's going to give them a healing and a restoration, and He's going to give them an everlasting covenant. He confirmed that promise in Isaiah 61, 8. And then He told us in Jeremiah 32 and 40 that this covenant was going to be through a work of the heart of Israel that He done. We know that Isaiah or Ezekiel 37 is the resurrection of Israel whenever it's the dry bone, the valley of dry bones. And verse number 26 talks about after Israel is resurrected and restored, how that he's going to give them a new covenant. And, he, and Hebrews talks about the blood of an everlasting covenant. Now I want to throw this out to you. I'm going to throw you a curve and sit down and let you go home and study about it. Whenever that you read in your Bible, how many of you know the Bible uses the word everlasting? And then the Bible uses the word eternal. All right, they all are derived from the same Greek root word or Hebrew root word. But they don't have the same definition. A majority of time, whenever that you see the word everlasting in your Bible, it is contained within a frame of time. Everlasting most of the time says it will be here until time is no more. That's everlasting. Go John 3 with me. And then I'll say that. The Bible said that whosoever, John 3, 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. All right, eternal? Yeah. Eternal comes from a Greek word that's anos. And that means when it's here, it's here. Has no time, no bounds by time. Uh, time is only a space that was set in the middle of, uh, of eternity. So eternity has no end. Okay? But everlasting comes from a Greek word that is adios. Adios. Which means it's confined in a frame of time. So Jesus says this. <clears throat> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Born to heaven. Praise God. But not only we're going to heaven, but we can have life more abundantly because whatever that you think when they said in John 10 10, the thief comes not but the steal, kill, and destroy, and I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You can actually tie it in. If you study deep enough, you can tie that abundant in with part of the definition of abundantly to this word everlasting. Okay? So this is what it says. And I'll close, I promise you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you know what He's saying? I'm not going to only give you eternal life, but I'm going to give you a life to live while you're here. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you, Brother Taylor, a life to live like everlasting life. I'm going to give you life here. Yeah. And then I'm going to give you life there. Yeah. Everlasting's here. Eternal's there. I hope you've been to help this morning with the Word of God.